Welcome back to the Warhammer podcast, your weekly podcast where we talk all things Warhammer. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Wargaming Luke. Uh, as always, it's just the three of us this week. I'm joined by my amazing co-hosts, Simon, aka Hobby Waffle, and Ben, aka 90% Geek. How are we doing, guys? I'm Batman. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm having a really good night tonight. <laughs> that completely yeah. won't make any sense to anybody, but it does for us, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, no, very good. Uh, before we started recording, we've just been reminiscing about uh, 80s cartoons, so we're all a bit giddy at the moment. Yes, we are actually. <laughs> yeah. But um and also England are still in the Euros, so let's go, oh. even though we're dead boring, but we are still in. And also <laughs> Warhammer. My Warhammer. I, I starting to fill the wall. <laughs> so we have Elf Stormcast should... and uh, the I think the other one that Ben sent me on the on Discord, which is the lizard men doing the uh, podcast, uh, which is perfect. Yeah. We should Elf have to Storm rebrand the Luke's arrived. channel as Warhammer now. That has to be rebranded as Warhammer. Yeah. Pretty much. Hashtag Warhammer, right? Hashtag Warhammer. <laughs> Indeed. Um, but fantastic. We are uh, more or less ready to go. But before we do get into the uh, topics for this week, guys, we've got plenty we can talk about as always. Yeah. Um, make sure that you are subscribing to us on YouTube. Um, our biggest viewed ever episode last week. Um, so we want to keep building on that. Make sure you're subscribing to us if you're listening or watching. That means over on Spotify as well, guys, if you're listening to us there, make sure you're giving us a follow, leaving those uh, lovely reviews and all that good stuff. And join us over in the Discord, because we have people join us every week now uh, over in the, our Discord channel for some great chat. Um, and we love to see the, kind of what you guys are up to hobbying. We're going to be going through what we've been up to in the last few weeks hobbying, so make sure you're jumping in there, guys, and sharing what you're doing up to as well. And we'll be doing that as well, I suppose, as we go yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, I guess we can lead into kind of uh, hobbying from the past few weeks. I, I don't. I think I missed the last one as well, so I've got a fair bit I can definitely update on. But, I mean, uh, after we've done hobbying, guys, we've also got um, there's stuff to do with the dwarves being missing from Cities of Sigma and Age yep. of Sigma. We've got um, my thoughts on Spearhead and where we think Spearhead's going to go if that can live up to things, and we will end up on twenty questions. And there was a um, cool review re re reveal from today. Yes, there was for Necromunda as ne well. So Necromunda. Well. Necromunda. Yeah. Probably the coolest yet, actually. So we'll be getting mm. to that, in my opinion, anyway. Which is but, one um, of the reasons we ended up talking about 80s cartoons. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Reveal, yeah. so. I can't believe we'll that's and... how we got onto that, actually. Yes, when we get to the Necromunda part, we will try and behave, but we, yeah. we can't promise. Yeah. No, I, we're not. Don't even promise that. We're not going to. <laughs> we don't do that here. We don't make promises. <laughs> I'll no, start we... singing Stan da Bush's Dare if you promise that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, who wants to go first, though, guys, uh, for hobby updates uh, for the past couple of weeks, few weeks? I'll, I'll go last because I'll lead into Spearhead <laughs> from it, I think. Um, okay. Uh, what makes more sense. Uh, uh, Sai, do you want to go because you're top right? Uh, yeah, go on. I'll go first. Um, well, because I can't concentrate on anything at once or stick with a particular project for any reasonable length of time, I've now been messing around with uh, Imperial Guard, partly because me and Ben were talking about... Um, Imperial Guard regiments would love to come back and stuff like yeah. that. So I ended up um, messing around with the Valkyrie pilots. I've, I've mm. built the pilots for a Valkyrie, but I've ed cut the front of the mask away and added some guitar strings so they, they look more like the um, oxygen mask that a pilot would wear. Mm. So I've Ooh. painted up the pilots for a Valkyrie and I've half put it together. I've also got Gaunt's Ghost built up, ready to paint as well. Ooh, nice. uh, and then I've been messing around with um, a Chimera that I bought on eBay as well. I've just been stripping it back, ready to paint up, but I don't know what to paint it in. So that's the only nice. other problem. So I've been messing around with Imperial Guard. And the other thing I've been doing is Dark Elves Blood Bowl team. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, I've got the uh, Blood Bowl team out, ready to prime when the weather's nice, which I think it's going to be tomorrow night. So I might get those painted up. Uh, other than that, um, not really much else in terms of hobby. Uh, painted a stormtrooper for Shatterpoint, but that's it. We've had a, a lot of people decent. getting inspired to do some Blood Bowl actually over in our Discord. Um, that's so partly the reason why the Dark Elf yeah. team came out. Like, looking yeah, at yeah. the chat on the Discord. Uh, I forgot to say, actually, guys, if you do want to join Discord, link is in the description below. If you want to go and check out everything we're talking about here, drop in there. You'll be able to see all of that. Um, but no, that's cool, dude. You'll have to share us updates with what you what you're cracking on with. Yeah, I'll put some pictures on Instagram of the stormtrooper. Oh, I painted some uh, epic ultramarines as well. That's Yay! Nice. Keep continuing what? with that project. <laughs> what yeah, epic ultramarines did you paint? Yet. Pardon? Which epic ultramarines did you paint? What stuff? From Legion's Imperialis. So I've just done oh, the top. Of okay. 
Yeah, sorry. sorry um, I got excited there for a minute. I thought epic, not legions. Oh, yeah, no, sorry. It's uh, legions of Imperialis. <laughs> yeah, I suppose, true. Yeah. <laughs> that that's, gets scale, I suppose. <laughs> that's but a whole no, different uh, project, epic. Yeah, that's true. Uh, um, I'll have to actually gra uh, dig out old photos of my Gaunt's ghost that I did and paint it up, actually. I'll post them. Yeah, on. cool. Um, I don't think I've ever shared them on there, so I'll have to do that. Um, but yeah, Ben, uh, what have you been up to, bud, since last Tolby update? Uh, so, a load of Age of Sigmar stuff. I've, obviously, Ooh. I was working on a couple of warbands for Warcry, and that's kind of then grown into, okay, yes. well, using these as starting points, what could I then add to them to make them into a couple of thousand point armies for Age of Sigmar? So I thought, well, the points aren't going to change that much, and we know the general principle of how armies are being built for Age of Sigmar 4th edition. It's going to be, you know, up to five heroes and minimum uh, up to three infantry units or cavalry units, or whatever general non-character units per hero. So I kind of played around with some lists a bit, and then I tested them out today. And actually, they're very similar to what they've released in the points values today in terms of how the lists worked. But yes, yeah, so I've been working on a soul blight force based around the kind of the Warcry Warband that I put together, but kind of adding in a few extra units to bulk it out to a thousand points. And then I've also been doing the same thing for my Silver Death. Uh, I need to get myself a box of either tree sprites, tree spites, or uh, one of the, the nasty version spites. Uh, I need to add one more unit of those now, having seen the points values, to make it fit there. But then I'll have a thousand points of dead, a thousand points of wood, and I can do a game called Deadwood. Um, <laughs> so that's been ongoing. The other thing I've been working on, I've also been working on Blood Bowl, but I've been picking up some of our little league stuff. My my. Um, Halflings have been getting some love and attention. And finally, he came back in stock. He has been ordered and he arrived today. Rumbelo Sheepskin, riding <laughs> around on the sheep to be my star player with our little kind of my, my Welsh rugby kit themed halfling army. Halfling nice. blood ball team. So, oh, yeah, so that's get, what yeah, I've been I need to get on. on with my norms, actually. Absolutely. You're distracted by spiky elves when you should be painting gnomes. Clearly. Yeah. You should be painting geese and badgers and stuff. <laughs> yeah i mean when this gave and some of this gave stuff out of the way i'm gonna definitely order my uh uh snotling so mm, they're on the desk. We're, we're aiming to get a game in before the end of the year you've only got so much time to paint them i think we said october didn't we we're aiming that's for, the plan possibly so we'll see how we go but yeah. i can get stuff done fairly quick if i if i pay attention to it so i'll, I'll, I'll be all good i'll be good <laughs> Um, I'm so screwed. I need to get back in. <laughs> Where a sorry, yeah, sorry, needs to start now. <laughs> um, anything else, Ben? Or was that it for? for the no, no, years? that's that's kind of been it for me in terms the of the main things. Nice. Um, okay, so since I was last on, I'm not going to go through absolutely everything. But one interesting thing that's cropped up. Um, I mean, obviously the main the main things I've been painting and building and painting Tomb Kings. They're pretty much done. I posted a picture on the Discord about half an hour before we started. Of the full army shot of everything that I've done so oh, cool. far. Um, so if anybody wants to check it out, you can go over there. I think the only things I haven't done uh, painted now are um, the cap, all of the cavalry models. Uh, I've done the chariots, but not not the cavalry. So if anybody wants to go over there, check that out. You can do. Nice, uh, that's dude. mostly what I've been working through. Built everything from Skaven side for the Skaven. It really didn't take long, to be honest. That's how easy stuff is to build now, to be honest. Like it's, I mean, all of the clan rats are literally just two pieces for each rat. Just, <laughs> I mean, no, you could do. Without really know many there is. That's good. Good to know. Yeah. So if anybody's wondering, like with Skaven side, that's how easy it is. Literally two parts for each clan rat, more or less, except for like stuff like the standard bearer and things like that. And you've got forty rats to build, so you know. It Shut up! Tell me, it's <laughs> horrible and hard to put together. <laughs> um, but Don't I'm just waiting easy. for some new. <laughs> I'm waiting for some new speed paints to arrive for the colour scheme I want to go with, so I haven't started any painting on those yet, and I've also ordered some of the Norholes, because I believe they're going to be quite important for how Skaven play in the new edition. So I've got some of those and the Endless Spells coming um, for them, so I'm looking forward to that, and painting will ensue in the next week or two when I get the, their stuff arrived for that. But aside from stuff uh, with that, uh, we have another housemates thing in our house at the moment that likes card uh, TCG games, card games. Um, so I thought I'd show him and crack out and knock the dust off of Warhammer Underworlds. So I actually oh, had a game of Warhammer Underworlds nice. last week, and he really enjoyed it. 
So, um, one of the old seasons that I, I, I can't remember what it's called, but one of the old ones. That, uh, and it was nice. It was nice to knock the dust off of it and have a game. And it really actually helped me because I'm going to mention in a minute, I, I, the one game I played other than Underworlds was, uh, Spearhead. Managed to play, obviously, try out Spearhead for Age, New Age Sigmar. So, um, did that with my friend Finn last week. We got two games in, in the space of three hours. Um, it's about an hour and a half each game is what it took, and I can't see anybody realistically getting it, any games of it in, you know, less time than that. To be honest, I know they say an hour, but an hour and a half minimum, I would say, for setup and get through the game. Uh, so you asked me before we started what my thoughts were on it, but I'll, I'll quickly give a few thoughts. But the main thing we want to chat about is more what where do we think things are going to go with Spearhead? I mean, obviously popularity will be a big thing, but it, and obviously whether they support it or not. Um, but in terms of just what I thought of it, uh, and like I say, I'm glad I played Warhammer Underworlds, because I would say it's almost a cross between Underworlds and Age of Sigmar. It's that fast addictive four rounds of gameplay on a smaller board. You've got your two forces, incredibly well balanced to the point where both of our games, I think it was something like 16-14 and 18-16 were the two points totals from the games. That's how close it was. I think both games, we both went ahead, back and ahead again throughout the entire four turns or rounds of the game. Um, you always feel like you're, you're, you're up at one point in the game. You never feel left out in that respect. Um, cool. yeah, I think, and, and the reason it works for anybody who's listening and, and curious about it that hasn't got to try it yet, um, it's purely because... After a turn, you basically work out who's the underdog, and the underdog gets the twist um, as their kind of help, if you like. And they can range between anything from, like, um, I don't know, bring back so many models to a certain unit, or, um, I don't know, pick one objective on the map, and nobody can score on that objective. And it can just shut right. down your opponent for one turn, even though it's a small board. You wouldn't believe how much it changes the entire game. Mm. And I know, Ben, you said that you were worried about, you know, two forces on such a small table. Yeah. Um, the, the way they designed the spearheads, so that I played against Finn Stormcast, my friend. Half of your units don't come in until the third battle round onwards. Mm. Um, like deep striking through lightning. Um, that's interesting, because didn't you say there was only four battle rounds as well? Yes, yeah. So they're um, only but that's the whole point, right? So it's meant to be a fast game. So mm. once you finish one, if you've ever played something like Underworlds, it's meant to be quick. It's not really meant to be narrative. Competitive players will have a field day with this game. I There will be tons of tournaments with this, without a doubt. It sounds a little bit like 40k in 40 minutes. So that kind of fast-paced, fast-rolling yeah. type game. That sort of thing. But I mean, it, and, and nobody, if anybody's worried about the fact that it's kind of Combat Patrol again, where it's just, you know... They've kind of just made quick 40k or quick Sigmar. It's yeah. not. It is definitely a nice game unto itself. Um, well, that was my worry about Spearhead was that they launched Combat Patrol as part of 10th edition 40k, and it's just dead in yeah. the water Combat Patrol. I mean, like they go, hey, here's the next Combat Patrol. And everyone goes, yes. And how much money do I save by buying this box set? Nobody looks at those box sets. I don't, well, I'm making these broad generalizations. I certainly don't look at those box sets and go, what's in it oh cool that's going to be a cool force to use in spearhead i was really excited by uh, by spearhead by combat patrol when it first came out but i've got to be honest it just doesn't have enough to differentiate it from regular 40k i mean combat patrol no, I think, I agree, originally yeah. was more just designed as like a start off at small points and yeah. um, collect more models and build into higher points level games whereas this is a separate game it's just completely mm. separate which is it's it's fantastic um i can't i can't uh i mean i'm a narrative player as well i'm not a competitive player but i enjoyed it for what it was i i don't know that i'll i'll be playing it forever it's because they're quick games and you you know you have to each spearhead is so different once you've used your own spearhead once there's with this specific set of secondary objectives mm. there's only so many different games you can have that feel different if that makes sense is there any if, criticism no, i get that have? But if they if this is a first wave of Spearhead, and if they release further mission packs and further objectives and stuff to keep the game alive, I suppose that's one thing it would have if they did that over Combat Patrol is the support. 
is keeping it alive as a separate game system rather than using it as essentially, hey, run intro games at home, guys. Don't come mm, into the store yeah, no for an intro game. We'll get you to run an intro game for yourself at home. They've certainly given that impression, haven't they, with like Spearhead, Fire and Jade, so it's mm. like a name to start off. It would yeah. sort of imply that something else is going to come along, Spearhead, like you say, whatever the name is, different mm. missions, different objectives, different ways of playing maybe. So hopefully they'll keep it fresh and entice I mean, people to buy those spearhead boxes which at the end of the day that's going to be one of the aims isn't it well, I feel I mean, it's interesting. It. if they can yeah, do it as like the seasons of war if they can keep a different you know this is fire and jade the next one could be like amethyst and steel or something you know death and well, iron, whatever yeah luke just said something interesting then he said once you've had a few games it's not going to be any it's not going to be any different mm, so it's like it's like, almost you know, as if you think to yourself i won't, I won't mind trying spearhead with I don't know. I didn't have Deepkin now. See how they play, and it entices mm. you to go and try something else. Because I, 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 you may have caught the end of what I was saying to Cyben before we started. But with the what you have is you each have a deck of secondary objectives, and each turn you draw three, and you mm -hmm. try and if they're fast fire, they're really quite. Some of them are relatively easy to, but it's on each card. There's also a tease, so you can either mm. choose to use like almost like a command ability, okay, um, on the card, or you can choose to, uh, and then you lose the secondary objective on that card, or you keep the card and try and gain the the victory point from the card, um, for the secondary objective that's on it. So it's like a a constant tease with every card you draw. Okay, it's so addictive the way that they've done <laughs> it. Um. And uh, the thing is, the secondary objective is tied to the objectives on the boards um, and also the terrain. And so this is the one thing, if you want to add terrain to the boards, you can't because the specific uh... terrain on the board is tied to secondary objectives. So my thought is if they bring out other se new seasons, they might give new terrain um, that are tied to the new objectives and the new boards would be my guess. Okay um yeah and then obviously yeah you'll get that'll be the way they freshen it up i suppose um but that's but I mean, the that's... Only one thing i can see them doing with it well that that's something i've kind of been asking for them to do for years with both like you know age of sigma and now the old world's out i've been saying okay let's do it for old world as well because they used to do these old campaign packs and it would be like you know you get some cardstock scenery you'd get some different scenarios that were all linked scenarios there's nothing to stop them from going okay here is the next one and it is some you know new objective secondary objective cards like a new cardboard mat or whatever to play on and maybe just you know one sprue of some new scenery bits that are for yeah. that next spearhead set mm. but that so, could keep kind of you hey you, you played spearhead fire and jade now play this version of spearhead and i imagine we've done that like new spearhead box sets as well yeah as in, as in like for uh, the uh, different armies that haven't even got them yet or i don't think i think iron jaws are going to be waiting for a new one i believe and there's a few um so we'll we'll definitely get them you know, over the next half a year and maybe a new season as well um well, there's nothing i suppose to stop them from doing new spearhead boxes for the existing armies as well like hey, hey you've got a first thought, yeah. spearhead box now you know the, the, just as an example the i think the sylvan f1 is uh branch witch some tree man some forest spites and a three Kurnoff hunters, but who's to say the next one might not be five gossamid archers and mm. you know the the God, I think he's called the one with the big flappy wings. The mm. <laughs> um, I know what you mean though. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But so put some different what units into a box and go. Hey, this is a new spearhead for Silver. You've got mm. the old one now. Play this one. Yeah, uh, and it'll be interesting to see how long it can last as its own little game. Mm. Um, and obviously that will rely on support for it and how it's received once it's actually properly out. But I am really intrigued to see how this thing does because after playing it, I've got to say, um, the like I say, the longevity, not necessarily there, but mm. I can really see how it could do well. I see where the hype was coming from. I can, I definitely recommend you guys at least trying a game at some point to see how, what you Yeah, think. we'll do. Well, the rules were launched today. We've got them now. So yes. I've had a, yeah, a brief yeah. pour through them. Maybe we should do a retrospective in one year's time, kind of how has Spearhead been one year in? And that would be a cool one to do. Indeed. And and how are the Chaos Dwarves integrating into Age of Sigma? <laughs> how How is the Hushut Spearhead compared? Yeah. In a year's know, time, we'll, we can look back and see how they're doing. And yeah. they've actually, they have put the full rules out for Age of Sigma as well for 4th edition by the looks of it, like advanced and everything. Um, which is really interesting. So the only thing you're not getting from getting the rule book, I, I believe, is going to be the law. So mm. interesting. But yeah, yeah and then um, you've got, 
order is it order tomorrow faction pack well, that's it. Yeah, yeah, it's big, like six faction packs landing tomorrow so, uh, yeah all the other ones podcast goes out they'll be today won't it mm, order. yes yeah, yeah by the time Looking you're watching this I'm sure next week's podcast will just be like us diving into the factual. Oh, I'm sure. Ah, pick, this is a... pick, picking out our favourites and whatnot. Yeah, that would be a cool it. one. Make sure you come back next week for that one as well. We'll look forward to it indeed. Uh, anyway, we'll move on from uh, the, the spearhead hype, uh, mm -hmm. as it is. Uh, and I believe the next thing on the agenda is, if I can get it up, here we go, is, uh, uh, well, the, the peak for me here of the, the Necromunda model and, and miniature announcements um, the heretical tech priest Biologus Hermiartus is how I'm going to say that. Does this count uh, for a... And now Hermiartus. the news. Oh, sorry, man. Yeah, of course. Well, I probably oh. should have said that before Spearhead. But there we go. There we go. No, he's cool. He is so cool. <laughs> he is awesome. Um, you guys will know more about the lore about him than me. I've just had a read up on him, actually, son. I mean, one thing I would say is with all of this Necromunda, uh, like these Malstrain gene stealers and whatever so far. I thought the models are cool, but the narrative behind it, I, I'm not quite sold yet. So but now that this guy's been revealed and he's supposedly, you know, the creator behind yeah, it well, and his backstory. This is peak. Yeah, Don't talk to me on my son again. Yeah. yeah. So th th this is not, um, it's not Hermiatus per se, is it? It's what's no. left and. Yes, um, been recreated uh, um, of Hermiata. So this is the guy that started messing around right at the beginning and let a gene stealer loose in Hive Secundus. Um, Massive uh, Fabius what's... Bile uh, vibes. It's Pardon? such a cool background. Massive Fabius Bile vibes. Yeah, it's really cool with his little um, pet gene stealer dog thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, so very what... very awesome miniature. Forge roll resin again, by the way, mm. just in case anyone was wondering. I think it have to be for that detail. Yeah. Uh, they also announced at the bottom that um, it's it's we know there are supplements coming now because it does say that the rules for this guy are coming in a future supplement. Uh, so we know that we're going to yeah, get which makes me think we'll get Necromunda Secundus, Hive Secundus, and then there'll be books again, won't there? Just like so, this guy's got to be a way away yet. I've, no, what I was going to say was, have, have either of you read the Adrian Tchaikovsky Gene Stealer Cotton? I'm a huge fan of his non. Oh no, no. No, I've not read it. So he, he, I won't talk about his other non 40k novels, but just say check them out. They're really cool. But he's written one 40k novel because it turns out he's also a huge wargaming geek as well as being an awesome author. And he wrote a gene cult novel where the gene cult are the good guys. Uh, so right. It's from the point of view of there's this massive like gene stealer cult uprising on this Adeptus Mechanicus tech world where oh, the wow. you know the the average populace are basically treated worse than the servitors. Like the servitors at least have the blessings of the machine god on them. The 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 basic population are treated as essentially living fuel. You know that they, they are an expendable resource. And then the, one of them gets bit kind of infected by a gene stealer. The cult spreads across the planet. But it's uh, told in such a way that all of the characters for the Gene Cult, therefore, are portrayed as being these heroic kind of freedom fighters. And the bad guys are very much the Adeptus Mechanicus, including the, the Magus Biologus, who captures a bunch of them and goes, oh, interesting, and does things like boiling them down to their you know, basic components whilst still alive. <laughs> Genuinely proper, evil, nasty stuff. Yeah. And I was looking at it, looking at this guy and going, this just, I immediately get the vibes that that novel gave off of kind of the, the infected and corrupted Magus Biologus vibe about him. He's so cool. Very, very cool indeed. Yeah, what, what I like about this guy is the sort of irony behind it as well. So mm -hmm. this is the guy that brought a gene stealer to Necromunda. For it science! Yeah, it, it got loose. It all went horribly wrong. And then um, Necromunda Secundus got pummeled from orbit. And then the Malstrain Patriarch, which we've yet to see, mm -hmm. is the one that sort of created this guy for what, what mm -hmm. was left of Hermiatus has now been created by the Patriarch. And he's like a, a new Hermiatus 2.0 or something they're calling him, aren't they? Yeah. 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 I, so, yeah. I really kind of want to paint the little kid Gene Stealer as Bart Simpson and call the the, the big guy Hermiatus. <laughs> it's Hermiatus Simpson. Give him a bigger belly. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. But no, oh. awesome. I think that's my favourite model revealed yet. For that, oh, it's a tricky so, one. Yeah. Because there was oh, that really cool Gene Stealer character that actually said that. Sorry, the. Um, yeah, there was really cool Gene Stealer Alpha. I don't know if I like the Gene yeah. Stealer Alpha more. What, the one with the big fist? The Thanos. Yes, the Thanos bug. Thanos bug. 
Yeah, I'm torn which as to which one I prefer. But the yeah, this is the one that's um was we put on Twitter, didn't we? Bar weep gran, I'll weep ninibong. Yes. And... Please spare my life, you may take the boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is close between a few of them, but to be fair, but I, I do like him. Yeah, I think he's pretty cool. I just the, the idea of the character, to be honest, is what's won me over as well, I think. This does um, mean we've now had three Dramatis Personae for the Gene Cult, for the, the Mouse Strain, and only one Dramatis Personae for the Imperium, for the like the Spiras, mm. which I do wonder if that means we're going to balance it out. Are we going to get another two Dramatis Personae for the for the Sp- Imperium side, you reckon? Oh, you mean a, a couple more Spider-Man villains? Yeah. Yes! Well, we, we do know that the, we were saying when we talked about this Cyanide, that in the background the... Um, Helmar Sion, who we've had released so far, her brother, her half brother, is present as the two of them go into the. What, what's what's he called? Is it Timor? I, I, can't, I can't remember what his name is, but yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna see the brother. I think in his Spira suit, and then my other guess maybe some sort of Spira character or something Vansar Tech Hunter yeah. leader, maybe like a, that a gang cool. leader or a gang character or something like that. Or it could be something completely random, like some kind of tech prospector kind of character, yeah. like a, you know, a hired gun I, or a I was thinking bounty that hunter. Then. Yeah, like some well, sort bounty of hunter would be cool, actually. Mm. Yeah, like a a lawn explorer into Hive Secundus. Oh no, you know what? You, you know what it needs to be. We want a, like an arbitrator, but like not a um, palatine enforcer, like an actual adeptus arbites judge who's gone into Hive Secundus to bring the Imperial law. We want a Judge Dredd character going in there. Judge yeah. Long walk yeah. style. That would be amazing. I, I'd be up for that. No, I'll look forward to it. If you're listening, yeah, you, you can have that one. Let's, let, let's have an, you know, one of the only arbitrators, actual Adeptus Arbites arbitrators on Necromunda going into I, Hive Secundus. I'd love to see a matchup on their side for like the Thanos bug. So like a big yeah. Juggernaut suit or something for one of them. That'd be Like a cool. massive aura suit. Rhino, we basically need we need Rhino. Yes, the Rhino. Now. <laughs> oh God. Uh, yes. Oh, so God. Um, that, that that is pretty much it for for the. the uh, I don't. Well, I assume we've probably got a couple, few more, maybe Mondays where we have more reveals for the Necromunda so. models. But more we'll, Necromunda. We'll see. Indeed, we will look forward to those, and we'll, we'll keep you updated, guys, in future episodes. Um, but the last kind of topic for the new segment this week, we kind of wanted to touch on. Um, which Ben, you actually did something on this morning as well. I did, um, yes, we I was did really a, excited. A, a chat on it, so uh, you'll you'll certainly have uh, your uh, research down already on it. But effectively, it looks like which was probably expected, I suppose, but um, mm. and long time coming. But the Duardin models f- uh, from the Cities of Sigmar section on the well on, on the website in general have been removed completely. They they do no longer exist on the website. Um, so obviously we know we've got Duarden coming, Ben, don't we? Um, for all well, we've all got dwarfs coming. This Duarden Sorry. thing is this new yeah, age. Well, yeah. age of dwarves. Dwarves. Actually, what are they called now? Like dwarf mountain holds or something weird? But yeah. Dwarfs. They're dwarfs. Dang they it. are dwarfs, yeah. But um, yeah, we know that they're coming anyway, so it makes sense that if they're taking them down, they'll just be reboxed yeah. or whatever and, and sent out for them. Um, so the, have no fear that I'm sure the models will be coming back. Um, but obviously the weird thing is, um, more for me that I wanted to discuss anyway, is obviously we're getting Age of Sigmar coming out, uh, Cities of Sigmar are no longer really the Cities of Sigmar, at least not at the moment. Well, but beyond like that, Dark Elves, was it? Yeah, so the Cities of Sigmar is there, in terms of models that they have left now, it's the new Cities of Sigmar stuff they came out with, so it's all the kind of, yeah, that's it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's basically the Dark Elf range from Warhammer Fantasy 8th edition, and then it's the new stuff that they brought out. So it's things like the... <laughs> there we are, the Free Guild, uh, Steel oh, Helms, oh, Fusiliers, cannon. yeah, uh, Cavaliers. It's all of this new stuff they've released. It's the little bits of leftover kind of Warhammer Empire stuff, like the Steam Tank and the Celestial Hurricanum. And then it's Dark Elves, because they couldn't, it's even, it's Dark Elves that are pictured, let's note, on square bases. I mean, that's the really, they are ranked up on square bases, like old world models. I think these are one of those, we'll get around to it as soon as we can jobs. They're going to disappear from Cities of Sigma. Yeah, well, they're going to sure. reappear in the old world. I think these will just, yeah, they will be, it will be the same. I'm not even... I mean, obviously, we haven't had. We'll, we'll know by the time this podcast's out tomorrow, probably, if not very close, because we'll have the rules for City Sigma. 
um, what actual rules for these other races, other than humans, are we going to have in the new Cities of Sigmar battle tome? Well, that's the weird thing. The points values that they share today, the battle profiles, they're all still in there. They're not even marked as going to Legends, like all the other Dwarf, the Warden King. Oh, really? And... Okay, I haven't checked Yeah, that, so no, I went did. and checked. It was okay. Pointy Paints. Pointy Paints mentioned it in his video. Yes, yeah, Rick, But yeah. they're all still there on the points list, and they're not marked as going to Legends or anything like that. But his theory, and I agree with him, is that when the Cities of Sigmar book launches at some point during 4th edition, they just won't be in it. And at that yeah, point, then, right. the points values that were the stand-in points values for the moment will go out of the way. But it's interesting that they've made a difference there between stuff that is marked mm -hmm. as, this will be in Legends, 1st of June, 2025, versus stuff that's just there at the moment, but they don't sell models of it anymore. Yeah, because I guess what they're... Odd. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess what they're counting on is that... that but presuming because the points values are there, I'm assuming that when the downloadable rules come out, the mm. rules for them will be there. And if they're planning on re-releasing the dwarfs later this month, which is my prediction, I think dwarfs are going to be here before the end of July. It might, the might even possibly be announced on Saturday, dwarves. Maybe. For, that's the, following, it. for the following week. Yeah, for uh, the sorry, week. Sunday night for the following Saturday. Yeah. But they might then just come straight back again. It's just you'll have to put them on round bases yourself. Mm. It just makes me wonder, obviously, because I know they're trying to separate the models, aren't they? The mm. rate model ranges from Old World and the Age of Sigma. Yeah. I do you think maybe in the future we might just get like new mixed units for Cities of Sigmar, new model units where you do actually just get a mix of dwarves and elves and humans in one unit? I think so, like way? they've done with Slaves to Darkness. I mean, we got things like the dark, you know, the darker uh, the Chaos Dwarf that first mm. made the reappearance in the Spire Tyrants, and you know the Chaos Ogres that were there in the um, Iron Golems. So th there has been this precedent for kind of mixed units. Mm. And I, I think that we might get that. I mean, it might just be that they release new elven units and dwarven units for Cities of Sigmar when mm. Cities of Sigmar come out. So it's not just all humans, but, you know, here is an elite unit of elven swordsmen. But equally, they might just very quietly move it to the mm. point where... You know, know the dwa the Dwarden are there in the background, happily, ma you know, making steel and mining things, and they only really fight yes, if the city yeah. itself gets attacked. The elves are off concocting highfalutin spells and stuff, and again, they don't really turn up unless they're attacked. Yeah. And they leave Kaz you know, uh, the Fire Slayers and the Caradons to be the Dwarden yeah. in Age of Sigmar, which is still two flavors of dwarves. It's, you know, it's yeah. same level. Yeah, yeah. And, if, and if we get Chaos Dwarves, if we get Hushut as well, there'll be three flavors say, there'll of dwarves. Be three flavors. Dwarves, three flavors. It's one more flavor than you get in, you know, the Warhammer of the Old World. Um, but yeah. likewise, you know, we've got the Lumineth basically being high elves. Do we need elves in the Cities of Sigmar? Or can the Cities of Sigmar be very much uh, the Imperial Guard, a human domain? Oh, yeah, this this was what I was going to say. I, that's I my inkling. I think, uh, I think that's where they're going with it. If you'll just have the human models sold for Cities mm. of Sigmar and in the battle tome, and then, like you say, it's just in the lore in the background, or maybe like the actual command abilities and things, maybe that links to that sort of thing, like you know, a buff from like the Iron Weld uh, arsenal or something. Like, yeah, perhaps buff the what's it called, the uh, cannon, the Iron Weld great cannon, you know, or maybe like one character, you know, like a Dwarden engineer manager or something who comes up and helps with the Iron Weld great cannon or something. And there's no reason why you can't just actually, with like, for example, the Unwalled Great Cannon, mm. you know, put dwarves on there anyway if you want to, I suppose. Yeah. Bit of converting. So it'll be interesting to see what people no. do and what they do with it. The complete shock of me, I just, there's just something that's just occurred to me, is if they suddenly go, oh, by the way, all of the Dark Elf stuff is now going to be Daughters of Cain. So when Daughters of Cain relaunches in fourth edition, if it's suddenly, and all of this stuff is now under Marathi's control. Or equally, if they finally give us the Malekith launch we've been waiting for, and all the Dark Elf stuff suddenly goes, ha, 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 we were under the control of Malekith all along. Screw you, Sigma. Who knows? Yeah, indeed. So it'll be interesting to see where they go with this. And uh, I'll I imagine uh, we'll pr we won't find out realistically until the next Battle Tome come actually officially comes out for... No. Which, if we got 40k to go by over the next year, they'll rattle out all the new battle tomes for Sigma. And well, certainly a lot of them, I think. Them. Within the first 12 months, we'll get 80% of them, I would expect. Yeah. We've not had all of 40k to uh, our books. No, case, not all We've of had them, a good 75%. A lot of the main codexes, I think, the main yeah. versions are mostly out, I think. So, 
Yeah, interesting. We'll have to wait and see, guys. But, but far um, more important is dwarves coming to the old world. Yeah, I mean, and like I say, you're going to get those. Uh, and I think you mentioned earlier, because I did watch your video, Ben, to be fair, on uh, we'll probably get end of this month, I would have thought, surely. Before cause... the end of the month, I guess. I think size right. I mean, I'm honestly surprised, to be honest, that it wasn't announced Sunday, this such a Sunday just gone. Because mm, yeah. I was a little disappointed when I looked at it and went, you have announced a couple of Black Library books. That's the pre-orders? Wow. You are really sheltering Age of Sigmar 4th edition. Like, you're trying to make sure that nobody has anything else to spend money on at the moment in the vague hope that people will buy 4th edition Age of Sigmar rather than anything else. I mean, something we discussed last <laughs> week, so there you go. Yeah, I think, I think they'll go up for pre-order soon, won't they? Because if the rumours are true, then we're going to get a reveal sure towards the end of July, early August yeah. as well. So let's launch the dwarves and then get get on with the next whatever the old world army launch. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if end of next week, guys. So stay tuned if we get a reveal day, new reveal day announced, and then the following weekend, I think it would roughly be, we'll probably actually get a big reveal day because we it'll be that'll be to lay out the second half of the year, I should imagine. Yeah. Um, we might even get a couple, one or two new where. Uh, what are they called? Uh, planners, where oh, they yeah. show you what's coming, kind of thing. Roadmap. Um, yeah, roadmap. That's the right word. Um, you'll you'll know if they've released dwarves or put dwarves up for pre order next Sunday because I'll be here with like an iron helmet on and an axe next week when we're doing it. Uh, I mean, so I'll probably say, but we're just probably curious as to when Chaos Dwarves are, and Hashu are going to get probably announced now at some point. I don't think this soon, but it's got to be close. I'm, I'm, I'm betting, place my bet on the Christmas reveal end of this year for the new year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's that coming down the chimney? He's got a great big beard, but he's also got tusks. Oh no! It's <laughs> a shut. His, his beard's made of chains. <laughs> Hassut. <laughs> but yeah. Um, oh God, yes. Hashtag Hassut. Yeah. <laughs> We'll get that going end of the year. <laughs> get the rumour mill going. Yeah, Krampus is coming. <laughs> um, all right, guys. So we'll end the show on uh, Warhammer 20 questions uh, this week. Um, and we had a suggestion in from Idren Art. Um, <laughs> it didn't get back to me. Uh, it's his uh, username on Reddit, so he didn't get back to me with a real name. So we'll, we'll go by that for now. Um, we'll force Luke we'll... to try to pronounce it. Idren yeah. Art. <laughs> Um, but, Sounds Irish uh, to me. Yeah, it does sound a bit something like that. I think we had a uh, that kind. Of, I, know, I think it was one of the community questions last week. We had a bit of one like that. But um, yeah. Uh, but um, otherwise, guys, if you've uh, not listened to or watched the podcast before and you're wondering what Warhammer Twenty Questions is, if you've ever played a game of uh, Twenty Questions, it's basically that, but for Warhammer. So the guys, um, they will uh, have nineteen yes or no questions. Uh, the 20th will be their guess for a suggestion that's sent in from one of you guys, the viewers, uh, of a Warhammer character or unit from the Warhammer universe, anywhere in the universe. Um, the guys are undefeated. So it's, undefeated. Um, <laughs> so it's, uh, they've got a hell of a streak going. So, and we're on episode 19, I think, today. So, um, you know. Okay, we've got to make it to 20 so we can have 20 undefeated 20 questions. Absolutely. Well, we haven't had it every week. We every week, have we? No. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. But, um, but not probably not far. I'll have to work out, actually, how what the streak mm. actually is. But, yeah. Yeah, I'm going um, to change you up this week. Um, mm. Do you reside in the mortal realms? Uh, no. That's the first question. Do you reside in the 41st millennium? I do. Yes. I knew I should have started with Old Faithful. <laughs> it's because it got you last week. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, do you wear power armor? No. That's three. Do you have a model? Yes, four. Are you Xenos? No, that's five. Mm. Xenos... Not in power armor. So not Xenos, so human, but not in power armor. <laughs> that probably means it's not a space marine, not a custodian, not a sister of battle. So we're looking at guard, inquisitors, rogue traders, other sundry such non power armor wearing things. This is what worries me. If it's not guard, it's gonna be some random gardener from some in palace on the <laughs> Lesser known, Miss, world. Mrs. Miggins, the inquisitorial yeah. tea lady. Oh my, no, she has I a model. Will. She has a model, though, so it can't be something yeah. that quite that random. Would you be considered a leader? Ask size, usual. 
question. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, am, yeah. Am I a leader, did you say? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no. That's six. Okay. Well, let's rule it out then. Are you part of the Astra Militarum? No. Seven. Okay. Do you work for the Inquisition? No, that's eight. Mm. Not guard. Not any, I really not like this one, by the way. Anyone from the Inquisition, then? Uh, we've completely neglected the fact that the Mechanicum exists. Ah. I forgot. I even forgot they were a thing. It's got a model. It's got a model. So it could be like, um, you know, like the Elusian Star Striders, the, um, the leader of that faction. No, it's it not a leader. Like that. He said not oh, a leader. It's, it's not a leader. Yeah, not a leader. Yeah, but it could That's be one right. of those. If you know, it could I mean, be one, one of the, the retinue. Yeah. Um, Although they, I don't know. I thought they said that they work for the Inquisition, the Rogue Trader and her crew. Oh yeah, technically, because they're under the Imperial Agents' rule. Have you? Has this character been in a Black Library novel, or does it have its own Black Library novel or publication? Which one are you asking? <laughs> Truth. To be honest, I'd no. probably say ask the Black Library. Do I have a Black Library? Yeah, well, I'd ask that. To be honest, do you want to do that? Yeah. So I, the answer to that, I'll say no. That's nine. Okay. I'm going to ask: Do you worship the Machine God? No. Ten. Okay, so it's not Mechanicus, not God, not Mechanicus, not Imperial Agents. It's not Power Armored, but not Xenos. All correct. Are you? Um, have we have we discounted something? Have we discounted whether or not they're loyal? It could be like a yeah, we're missing something obvious. Aren't chaos we? mutant or something. Would you be considered loyal to the emperor? No, that's eleven. Okay, not loyal, but not wearing power armor, and has a model, and does have a model. Definitely has model. Oh, it could be like a demon or something. It could easily be a demon. Are you a creature of the Empyrean? Are you meaning like demon? A warp creature, yeah. Yeah, a warp creature. Uh, no. That's Damn it. Cool. Okay. Ah. Not loyal. Mm. Not a demon. Not have in we power just, armor. Have we assumed they're human? I think we have. Have we assumed they're human? We assumed, because, question. because they're not Xenos. We asked if they were Xenos, and he said no. So we've assumed that they're human. And you human. asked their power armor. I said no. So I think you just kind of narrowed it down as like somewhere in between. You, yeah, you didn't necessarily now narrow down to human. No, we didn't. But I mean, if they're not in Xenos, then the only option is human because everything else is Xenos or demon. That's true because you've asked demon and I said no. So it's not a demon. It's not Xenos. It has to be human. That is the only options within the galaxy, short of being well, like a tank. I mean, it could be a tank for all we know. I was just going to say, it? it could be, it could be you are twenty five or whatever he's called. You know, the uh, man of iron from Blackstone oh, Fortress. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know who you mean. I suppose there are some in between because be he he's not a leader, uh, but he's got a model. It doesn't work. Not Xenos. He don't wear power armor. So, are you human? Yeah, go on then. Yes. Okay. Right, okay, that rules that out then. That's 13. They, they are human. But they're not loyal. They do have a model. They're not a demon. And I mean, they're human, which means they, they rules out my worry, which is they're going to turn out to be like a land raider or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> someday somebody will do that. Someone will pick like a, a chaos. Oh, well, yeah, it doesn't have to be a character. It can be a unit, to be fair. No, that's it. They'll pick like a chaos war bike or something. Um, just to really stump us. Are you a character? No, that's 14. <sighs> So, oh, for God's sake, so this is going to be human, some random yeah. non-loyal human. Well, there's a very a limited pool of non-loyalist humans at this point. Because it can't be like Gene Steeler Cult, because that would be Xenos. Because they're not human. It can't be well, like just... Squats. Oh, I mean, it, it, we're assuming loyal. Uh, we're non-loyal. Non-loyal to the Emperor has to mean traitor. It can't mean just, you know, they don't go to church every Sunday. There's only a limited number of units that are human. I mean, there's like tra the Traitor Guard unit and the Dark Combine thing. We, we, know, we know he's human, don't we? We know it's human, yeah. Oh, uh, well, he or she, I should say. Well, they. I think we've used the, the, the they at this point, given that it's not a character, it's a unit there. Yeah. 
So they are human, not loyal, not in power armor, which rules out most of the traitor legions. So you go into armies of chaos and it's all just space marines. Well, that's it. There's only like three or four units that can be on there. There's like the twisted mutant things, which I guess they still technically count as human. Are you mutated? No. 14. Do you reside on the planet Necromunda? No. 15. I, really I like where way. you're going with that. To give you a hint. Doesn't reside on the planet Necromunda, but you like where he's going with it. Just thinking outside the box a bit more. Yeah. But That's just... going to be my only hint. Do you think they may have visited a Blackstone Fortress? Or could it be one of like the... I know the... I was going to say, there can't be any of the Navy breaches or anything like that because they're no. loyal. Yeah, they're loyal. The, 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 the breaches are loyal. The Arbites are loyal. I mean, even the rogue traders are loyal. They're just <laughs> pirates. <laughs> okay, which ones? Well, it's not going to be the Amble. It's not going to be the Zote. Hell, well, it's the, the human the anyway, it? aren't they? Yeah, that's it. What else, the hell else did they release for Blackstone Fortress? Or for Necromunda, for that matter? Like, the navigator point, would be the navigator would be loyal. The missionary would yeah. be loyal. The purifier would be loyal. Janus but they're Drake, all. Can that. we just clarify that, Luke? The box is still on the Warhammer web website. Blackstone Fortress. Wait. So, do you want me to just clarify? Like, are it, are these the model or models on the? Site is it now? currently available for sale on the Games Workshop website now? No, I'll, I'll give you that. No, it's not. Oh, there was that one-off special character box they did that had the Crusader, the um, Primaris Psyker, the Cyborg, even the Servitor would count as loyal, or it would automatically count as worshipping the Machine God. I know, I'm going to ask something, so in case we're pigeonholing ourselves here. Okay. Has this person, character... Um, is it part of the Blackstone Fortress range? No, that's six. Never been on Blackstone Fortress, right? Okay, let's rule that okay, out. Then. Let's completely ignore that. Then we were warm on Necromunda, but not a you model. Like where we were going with it, yeah. Like where we're going, but it's not a model that is on Necromunda. If this is, if this turns out to be one of the Inquisitor range or something, darker marker, I'm going to batter you. <laughs> well, to be fair, the diggers aren't loyal, but are human. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what worries me. Would it be from the Gorkamorka range? The mutant he's not mutated, so it can't be the muties. Can't be muties, no. But there was those right. imperial guys that were trapped in the uh, uh, research uh, station, weren't they? But they would kind of be no, loyal, they, wouldn't they? No, the ones who were trapped on the research station became the muties. The That's right. Yeah, yeah. Diggers are the ones who were, were the miners who buried ship. themselves underneath. Well, the, the the diggers were the human miners that buried themselves underneath the pyramids on Gorkamorka, which is the planet Angelus. Which uh, I don't want to waste a question asking if they're no. if they're on the planet Angelus. <laughs> I'm just trying to think at the moment what else could it be. I'm racking my brain thinking through the Inquisitor range. They don't work for the Inquisition, though, and everything in the Inquisitor range works in some way, shape, or form for the Inquisition. But what else have they had, have they done that they've had models for that's human, that's not the Imperial... Not the Imperial... Okay, not the Imperial Guard, not the Adeptus Mechanicus, not Space Marines, not the Inquisition, not Loyal, not Mutated... Not Blackstone Fortress. Not Blackstone Fortress. Not Necromunda. No. There's very little. I mean... Battlefleet, not a, and it's a unit. We've established that it is human. It's not a vehicle, so it's not like an imperial battleship from Battlefleet Gothic or something. We've That's got two I mean, questions yeah. left, uh, and we are nowhere near. But what the heck else? This is what brought me back to Gorkamorka because I can't think of anything else. But I don't really want to waste a question asking. Is it? I'm well, okay. In all I can case, think of is diggers. Oh yeah, that's us. Awesome. Do you like digging? <laughs> yes. Thank God. Really? Seriously? Yes. yes. Nailed it. You... No, I'm not even kidding. You did. Oh my yes. God, Sai. I can't believe that you, okay, you just question 19, put onto that there. Like, See, on... <laughs> you know what? I'm going I, on thought I, I thought I had you there, and I knew I was right. 
This I is knew why I was right with every question. Find all and game I thought I had like you there. Manawar and Gorkamorka. I don't waste my evenings. <laughs> this is why this game is so good. <laughs> <laughs> right, how many questions have we had? Has he had, has he had... You've, got, you've got one last question and a guess. Right, so yes, I'll ask literally, a yeah. question and you can guess. <laughs> okay. So what did you ask? Do you like digging? I asked, do you like digging? And he said yes. Right. It's bad. You... Secret one with three questions. Dig, 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 dig. dig. <laughs> Are you constantly plagued by the sound of loud engines, gunfire, and shouting? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, Ben. Are you the Gorkamorka diggers? Yes. Or well, specifically digger boys, but yeah, I'll give you I'll give you diggers. Yeah, Undefeated. Undefeated. Yeah. Mad Max, this will be the cue moment to cue in the doof yeah, warrior for Mad, Mad Max. Max yeah. um, We've got away with murder there. You, well, yeah, yeah, I genuinely like, that was a... Cy pulled that out of nowhere there. That was ridiculous. <laughs> I, I can't know. believe it. Do you know we were talking I, before we started recording when I said England are playing terribly, but still getting a result? We've just done that tonight. Yeah, this, <laughs> I know. We've Gareth Southgate did it. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. Fair play, guys, because I, I thought you were lost on that one. And uh, no, it's definitely they're not le they're not uh, loyal to the emperor anymore. They've been no. their own civilization for years. I, I'm pretty sure they worship G Gork and Morka because they basically they want to be orcs. Yeah. Um, they just basically oh, well, worship orcs. Well done to the person who suggested that. that was Absolutely, a I thought it was a really good one. Um, and I thought it would take you close. It's just one of those where, unless you mention the right thing and get on the right track for it, you're never going to get there. So it's just one of those fun ones. But well, as well soon as we ruled out Blackstone Fortress, my next aim was for Gorkamorka. Yeah, because I was running out of options um but uh yeah thanks for the suggestion there I'm, i can't remember your name without search for it again so uh thanks so much thanks, um, yeah, some sort of, yeah some sort of elf name but yeah thanks for the suggestion um as always guys you can feel free to send in your warhammer 20 questions suggestions um for future episodes make them interesting like that one because i'd say that one's you know right on the line to be honest and That's being difficult as... and very doable not as tough as the Chaos Titan. That one was. Although no, that was hard. Oh, but we this is uh... pulled out of our backsides. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. horrible. No, that was uh, very difficult. Abominable. But, um, okay, guys, well done for that one. Um, but until the next one with twenty questions, we'll end the show there, guys. Yeah. It's been a fun one. Um, thanks to the guys for for joining me uh, this week. Uh, si, we'll start with you. Where can we find you, bud? Uh, yeah, find me on YouTube as Hobby Waffle, and I've got the same name on um, Twitter. And Instagram. I am on Facebook as well. I always forget to mention that. Um, yeah, so that's where I'll be. I'm going to post some painting painting miniatures this week. It's been a while since I've done that, so I'll try and get something up there. Awesome. Nice. Some mid-size uh, ultramarines. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not epic, but mid-size ultramarines. Little ultramarines, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's it. Yeah. Small ultramarines. You can find me on my YouTube channel. If you're not already a subscriber, come on over and subscribe. I've nearly hit 1,800, so all, every subscriber helps. Uh, and yeah, I will be back later this week talking about something, I'm sure. Uh, and 80s I've cartoons. Also, 80s cartoons may well be up there. I might just finally give it <laughs> yeah. an 80s cartoon video. Expect 80s cartoon content on Twitter this week. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, likewise, you can find me on Twitter. You can find myself and Sai Hobby Waffle over on Twitter. I'm there, and there is 90% geek, the same as my channel. Uh, we will be probably spend most of this week arguing about 80s cartoons. Uh, Luke, indeed. Over to you. Yeah, uh, same for me. So I'll be over on the Twitters uh, and wherever else, so Facebook, Instagram, um, and really enjoying the Discord at the moment. The chat's awesome. Uh, I'll be throwing more photos of stuff uh, when my Skaven starts to get painted up and whatever's going on. Um, so yeah, uh, that'll be it for, for this one, I guess, guys, you can, you know where to find us all, but until next week, guys, as always, happy wargaming. Bye. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>